The Lord will come and he will not delay. He will illumine what is hidden in darkness and reveal himself to all the nations. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, we pray, Almighty God, that the coming solemnity of your Son may bestow healing upon us in this present life and bring us the rewards of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. I am the Lord, there is no other. I form the light and create the darkness. I make well-being and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. Let justice descend, O heavens, like dew from above. Like gentle rain, let the skies drop it down. Let the earth open and salvation bud forth. Let justice also spring up. I, the Lord, have created this. For thus says the Lord, the creator of the heavens, who is God, the designer and maker of the earth, who established it, not creating it to be a waste, but designing it to be lived in. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Who announced this from the beginning and foretold it from of old? Was it not I, the Lord, besides whom there is no other God? There is no just and saving God but me. Turn to me and be safe, all you ends of the earth. For I am God, there is no other. By myself I swear, uttering my just decree and my unalterable word. To me every knee shall bend, by me every tongue shall swear, saying only in the Lord are just deeds and power. Before him in shame shall come all who vent their anger against him. In the Lord shall be the vindication and the glory of all the descendants of Israel. The word of the Lord. Let the clouds rain down the just one, and the earth bring forth a savior. Let the clouds rain down the just one, and the earth bring forth a savior. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace to his people. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him. Glory dwelling in our land. Let the clouds rain down the just one, and the earth bring forth a Savior. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. Let the clouds rain down the just one, and the earth bring forth a Savior. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and salvation along the way of his steps. Let the clouds rain down the just one and the earth bring forth a savior.
Alleluia, Alleluia. Raise your voice and tell the good news. Behold, the Lord God comes with power. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, John summoned two of his disciples and sent them to the Lord to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? When the men came to the Lord, they, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you has sent us to you to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? At that time, Jesus cured many of their diseases, sufferings, and evil spirits. And he also granted sight to many who were blind. And Jesus said to them in reply, Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind regain their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have the good news proclaimed to them, and blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. The Gospel of the Lord. It's always curious the way that Jesus answers a question. So many times he does not answer the question directly. This happens probably more frequently in the Gospel of John. People ask him things and he uses that as a teachable moment and moves them on. Usually from thinking about just mundane, earthly, material things, moving on to spiritual things. And in the Gospel of Luke today we see kind of a similar thing happening. What's going on here? is that uh, John the Baptist is unsure. So here he is in prison at this time, probably, and he is um, questioning, uh, really, maybe he's reflecting on himself and wondering, was all the work I did, uh, did it do any good or not? Did I do a good job of preparing the way for the Messiah? Is even this person that's coming... Uh, the Messiah. Is, is Jesus even the Messiah? He comes to question even that. And we can't really blame him for questioning that, being in a state of such distress. It's not surprising that he would second-guess himself at this point. But again, Jesus uses this as a teachable moment, as something that can, be, that can mean more than just directly answering the question, saying, yes, I'm the Messiah. He, he does this by looking at the things that Jesus has done. He asks him to, re, to observe those things, to remember those things. About the blind, about the lame, about lepers, about the deaf, about the dead who are raised. The poor have the good news preached to them. John should be able to look at all of those things and know, in, through knowing his scriptures, realize that these are all signs of the Messiah. All of these point to that. And this, in a way, even is a stronger case than just Jesus saying, yes, I'm the Messiah. He's really saying, well, look at what I do, and then you'll be able to tell who I am. Interesting thing. I would not uh, uh, question a philosopher on that on that very same thing. Sort of being and doing is always a difficult thing. Always a difficult thing for philosophers. So we won't get into that part of it. But what I will say is that Jesus represents the Messiah in what he does. He is the Messiah because of what he is doing. And so they have cause for rejoicing. They rejoice at this. John should recognize um, that the Messiah has come he fades into the background now, that is John the Baptist, and uh, his role is complete. And he can rest in that, realizing that he has done what he was supposed to do, he was done as he, as he was commanded, he has 
prepared the way for the Messiah, and now the Messiah is there, is with, the, with his people and performing these wonderful works. Now, this, um, this sort of thing, again, should not have been really all that surprising for them, as it's not surprising for us because we know our scriptures. We know about all of this, and it, it does not shock us, it does not surprise us about these things uh, happening. We are, we are familiar uh, with these things. But they're brought up to our attention now within the season of Advent to remind us of, I would say, some fundamental things that we need to know. First of all, as the first reading speaks about God's creation, God creates everything. He has power over all of these things. And then uh, the psalm reminded us, let the clouds rain down the just one and the earth bring forth a savior. Well, they didn't rain down any snow (laughs) today. So we have mass today. And uh, not all that much rain, it didn't seem, though I don't know what it was like where you were. At any rate, the Lord comes and the Lord will have an impact on us. If we allow him to, of course, we can ignore what's going on. We can ignore the goodness that we see. We can lament the fact that the Lord is not with us or is not with us in the way that we would like. Or we can rejoice in his coming and know that there is a day coming. There is a time coming when he will return in his fullness and establish great justice and peace for us. That day is still coming. You know, uh, uh, we are getting closer and closer now to the, uh, to the end of the um, first part of the season of Advent. The first part of the season of Advent is about thinking about really the two comings of the Lord. His birth, of course, but also this coming in glory. Soon we will turn from that to a more immediate focus on Jesus' birth for us. So we're at a turning point now in the Advent season as we, um, as we see Christmas coming uh, so quickly, just a week and a half away now. Uh, may the Lord help our preparations in, uh, for this season, not just the material things we need to do, not just the things we need to do to our homes or uh, other preparations that we need to make. Let the preparations be interior. Let them be ones that open our hearts and make us ready to receive the Messiah born to suffer and die for us, born for our forgiveness and salvation. May they uh, open us to the promise of his coming in glory who set all things right. So let's pray. Uh, We offer the Mass today for the Sansone uh, Evans family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Uh, That for leaders, as they govern, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And then, of course, for so many, we need to pray for uh, uh, Gene Gale's uh, brother, uh, Robert Blackman, who uh, died recently. Uh, We pray for uh, uh, June Cross, the aunt of Ellie McCurdy. We uh, pray for Mary Prock, for Jean Marr, Peggy, and Carl Abachowski, Iris Campbell, um, Anthony suffering from that rare cancer, um, Dan Branch, uh, Ricky Maines, Marianne Polly, Paula Shack's niece Allison, uh, Mary Beth Frosco, Jerry Brower, and uh, her niece Sherry, Katie Kopak, Kitty Spurrier, uh, Sam, and Ann Clark. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Are there any other prayers you'd like to offer? Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord of heaven and earth, the world depends upon you for its very existence, yet we often take our lives into our own hands. When we forget you, draw our eyes and hearts back to your Son, the perfect revelation of your eternal and all-powerful love. Through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplished for us your saving work. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Peter our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Joan of Arc, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Behold, our Lord will come with power and will enlighten the eyes of his servants. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts. Through, our, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.